All right, we're talking about our submediant triad today, which is to say the notes la, do, and mi in combination with each other, or in minor, la, do, and me. And as a point of departure, let's go back to the year 1817 and look at this fantastic little, it's, it's short, it's simple, it's clear, short, one, of, one of the shortest party mental treatises that we have by Ferno from 1817. So I'll just take a look at the tr treatise and translation here. And Ferno has been going through and he's been providing the rule, the octave. And you can see this right here in the middle paragraph. Scale degree six takes a third and a sixth. We learned this. We, we learned about the law six three chord or the lay six three chord when we were studying. We put the five three chords on the do fa sol, put the six three chords on the other things. And points out, you know, this naturally happens in, in minor and major. It takes the right pitches. But what I find really interesting, skip a little bit of stuff that we'll talk about next semester, which technically changes keys for just a moment. We'll get into chromatic harmony next semester. But I want you to take a look at this sentence that I've highlighted down here at the end. But if the said scale degree six neither ascends to scale degree seven nor descends to scale degree five, then give it a third and fifth. All right, so he's talking about using a la or lay five three chord in a certain situation. So let's get to go to the whiteboard and sketch out what Ferno is talking about here. So what we're talking about here is if we hear law on the bass, and he says normally we'd expect you know that law to go like law to t, in which case we'd give it a law six three, or we'd expect that law to come down to sol, in which case we would give it a law six three, or in minor you know we could go lay sol, in which case we would give it a lay six three. Lay do fa, la do fa, both have the do fa in them. We wouldn't go lay t, of course, because that's an augmented second. We don't like lay t. Even in minor, we would go la t going up the scale. But what he's saying is if you have a la that's not going to a t or sol, then it takes the la 5 3. And of course, la up a third is do, la t do, and la up a fifth, la t do re me. And this is the different note here that creates the law 5 3. So the difference would be la do fa, which has that fourth stretch kind of destabilizing things on top, or la do mi. Or in a minor, lay 5 3, which would have lay do and me. That's the key note there. So let's look at some contexts where this uh, law 5 3 tends to show up. One of them, everybody knows the pocketbook canon. Do, sol, la, mi, fa, do, fa, sol. Right, over and over and over again. It's the pop music of the 18th century, really. And so it starts off with a do, sol, la, mi. And of course, we already know do and sol like to take the 5-3 chord. I've been very comfortable for those for a long time. Now look here, we have the la that is going to me. It's not going on to T or to Sol. It's not doing a stepwise motion. It's skipping. And so according to Ferno, we would put a 5-3 on this. Let's just arpeggiate the first three chords. Do, do, mi, sol, mi, do, sol, ti, re, ti, sol, la, do, mi, do, la. And it gives that, that, that nice, dark, stable color there. No, sol, la. I know you can hear the pocketbook cannon in your head over the top of all of that. Another common pattern, oh, we need to give this a name, by the way. This is called the Leaping Romanesca. The Romanesca was an old dance, and this is the bass pattern that went with the, with the dance. And there are several versions of the Romanesca. We're only paying attention to the leaping Romanesca today as we're talking about law five threes. And, and so the bass leaps down do sol la mi, the next, you know, fa do, the pattern continues. And nice five threes, because I guess that's pop music of the 18th century. It's just using five three chords, no harmonic complexity there at all. 
But that's a great place to use a, a Do 5.3. Going to Sol 5.3, going to La 5.3. Um, another common context that we see this La 5.3 show up in is, let's say I do this bass line. Do, to, 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 ti, la, 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 so, fa, 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 la, so, 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 la, ti, do. The do what progression. Do, la, fa, sol, dum, bum, bum, bum. And now, of course, you, you know, you come in with heart and so, bum, bum, bum. It's just happening over this particular pattern. It's used up, used all the time in 50s pop music. That's why we call it the doo wop. Progression. And we've got our you know, tonic, plagal, authentic, and the, the, the law just nicely fills in this gap between the do and the fa. You see, in fact, it's exactly halfway between the do and the fa going down. Do, ti, la, sol, fa. Exactly halfway, so it's a great way to fill in that distance between do and fa. And we often hear la, fa skips in, in bass lines. It's, a, it's just a very common way to fill in music there. And according to Ferno, this la is not going to a sol, it's not going to a ti, so it takes the la, 5, 3. Do, mi, sol, mi, do, la, do, mi, do, la. Fa la do la fa sol ti re ti sol do mi so mi do la do mi do la fa la do la fa sol ti re ti sol do and you hear that that do what progression happen over the top and so these are some common places where that law five three chord shows up uh, another typical place, and we're going to go back to Ferno a second and take a look at him, because earlier he says something else when he's talking about scale degree 5. He's talking about how the 5 normally takes the 5 and the 3, but you can also add the minor 7th to it, the sol 7, 5, 3, providing that providing that scale degree 5 is followed immediately by scale degree 1, so sol do Typical cadence, we would expect to hear that. Or, even when the said scale degree 5 is followed by scale degree 6, sol la, or minor sol la, which would take the 3rd and the 5th, because the said minor 7th should resolve. So he's talking about here the, the sol 5-3 or the sol 7-5-3, resolving not to do 5-3 where we'd expect it to, but to la 5-3 or to lay 5-3. This is what we call a deceptive cadence. And it's another context for the law 5-3. You know, we've gone through our tonic, we've gone possibly through our plagal, and, and we hit that sol 5-3, or sol 7-5-3, and it resolves not to do 5-3. This is where you'd expect it to go. But instead, the bass goes up by step to La or in minor to Lay. And in this case, it will take the 5 and the 3. Why? Because of everything else resolving. Think of your different zones on top of the soul. Let's erase these different progressions really quickly. Give us some room to work here and investigate this resolution. So, of course, I've got my normal bossy zones. We go Sol Do. We have our, you know, Tenorizans, Redo, Arcantizans, Tido, our Altizans, Fa, Mi. Well, all I have to do is bam, the bass doesn't resolve where we expect it to. It went to La instead. Ah, now look at La up to Do is a third, La up to Do is a third, La up to, it is in fact the La 5 3. And that's the deceptive cadence. Of course, in minor we would have not Mi, but in minor we would have. May, and then we would have a lay here in the bass. And so this is the deceptive cadence, and it's the other place that we tend to run into the law 5 3, harmonically speaking. So the law 5 3 used when we're not going to move stepwise. If we're doing stepwise, it's more common to go law 6 3 to sol 5 3, or lay 6 3 to sol 5 3, 
Law 6-3 up to T-6-3 or even T-6-5, we'll get there. That's more common. If the law is skipping, for example, the law skips to me, we'd expect the law 5-3. The law skips to fa, we'd probably expect the law 5-3 in that situation, assuming there was a change in harmony. And in the deceptive cadence, where you hear things resolve except for the bass went sol la or sol le instead, that's a fantastic sound, and, and that would be our other place that we would use this la or la 5-3 chord. A little bit more common in, in major than in minor. The la 5-3 doesn't show up as often as the la 5-3 does. It's partially because in major, the la 5-3 is a relative minor. In minor, the la 5-3 is a chord called the light on vexo, which we'll get into in written theory in, in the future. For now, just concentrate on singing the law 5-3. We'll do a little bit of harmonic progressions next week. Uh, Karpinski has uh, the inquisitive exercises have folded chapters 43 and 44 together, so I, I can't throw that at you quite yet. I would love to get you listening to law 5-3 today, but we'll have to hold off on that until you know next week. But just kind of get a feel for that that law 5-3 chord. Sing some doo-wop progressions. Sing them in major, sing them in minor. Sing the Romanesca pattern and just get a feel for that law 5-3 chord in your ear.